I'm always aware I focus too much on the Y chromosome. Um, what about women? H half of Scotland are women. And uh, we don't forget the women. We study another part of the DNA that's carried by women and passed on by women. This is called the mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA. It's a bit of a mouthful, so we just call it mtDNA. Uh, and using these two systems, we can provide a, a very large amount of information about two ancestors. It's always important to remember we're only talking about two ancestors here. Your father's 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 father for the Y chromosome and your mother's 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 mother um, for the mtDNA. And you're missing out uh, all of your other ancestors. Um, and it, it's actually a bit akin to family tree studies where many people tend to study their own surname back in time and perhaps ignore some of their other ancestral lineages. But it also provides a complementary mother line tree for mitochondrial DNA. Um, and, and I get tired actually of people who, who start dissing the Y chromosome. Oh, it's only 1% of your DNA, it's only one of your ancestors. They don't understand genetics. They don't realize what it means to be kin. How much DNA do you think you share with your third cousin? About 1%. How much DNA do you share if you share a Y chromosome with someone? About 1%. So people who share the same Y chromosome type are roughly sharing the same amount of DNA, roughly, as third cousins. It does have meaning. It's not just some silly little piece of DNA, as some would have you think. Now, coming back to mitochondrial DNA, it's also one piece of DNA, and it's inherited from mother to children in the egg. It's carried in the egg itself. So men, I carry mtDNA, but I do not pass it on. Um, it's much shorter than the Y chromosome. The Y chromosome is 35 million letters. This is only 16,000 letters. But there are many, many markers on it, nevertheless. And we can do exactly the same trick. We can split it up into specific types, and we can see how these types are related to one another in groups. We can build trees. We have that kind of hierarchy. And we can then map that onto geography and look for geographic structure. But what's interesting is that mtDNA is much more mixed up than Y chromosomes. Um, when I look and compare, let's say, I don't know, Poland and Scotland, we see that the Y chromosomes are extraordinarily different. But when we look at Polish mtDNA and Scottish mtDNA, they're very hard to tell apart. And uh, people didn't understand this to begin with, but I think it means that women have moved around much more in history than men have. If they're just moving that little bit more each generation and spreading the mtDNA around and mixing it up all over the place, that's really the only explanation, whereas the men have stayed at home. Uh, they haven't actually been out exploring, as people think. A few have, no doubt, and some Y chromosome types are widespread, but many others, particularly in Scotland and Ireland, have stayed at home and show incredible continuity over many, many uh, hundreds or thousands of years. So just to reinforce the point about inheritance of Y chromosomes and mtDNA for you, I've drawn out here my pedigree. Here I am, and this cartoon is the Y chromosome. I've got a nice blue Y chromosome. I got it from my father. Who got it from his father? Who got it from his father, Jerome Wilson? Uh, the mtDNA is a circle. Here's an electron micrograph of it. Uh, I've got red mtDNA. I got it from mum. She got it from granny. Who got it from my great-grandmother, Rubina Tullock? Uh, so we see in this pedigree that I'm inheriting this from my great-grandfather on the paternal side, mitochondrial DNA from my great-grandmother on the maternal side, but it is not telling me anything about these guys in between. And of course, they all had Y chromosomes and mtDNA as well. My mum's father, James Flett, he had the Flett Y chromosome, uh, which he inherited from his father. And my dad, he has a mitochondrial DNA, which he got um, from his mother. And what people end up doing is uh, testing their relatives. They became very interested in, uh, you know, what, what was the flat Y chromosome like? So you go and you test your mother's brother. It's possible to find out about these lineages by choosing appropriate relatives, if you're real keeny like I am. <laughs> um, what about the rest, though, all the other parts of our genome? I'd actually say we can learn more about our history from the Y chromosome and mtDNA than from any other part of the genome, even though uh, that's only about 1% of the genome. And that's because they're inherited as a block. I have the identical, almost, Y chromosome that my great-grandfather had. But all the other DNA I got from him is completely mixed up with all the DNA from all my other great-grandparents. Um, all these other parts of our DNA, they're pictured here, all these other chromosomes, they're called, they mix with each other, each generation, and that's why children are a blend of their parents. Children inherit half their DNA from each parent, and most of it is on these chromosomes 1 to 22. And we can do analyses of these, but they're complementary analyses. They're slightly different analyses.